Hello and welcome back to the Red Dwarf Audio Only My Thoughts Podcasty thing. You know, I'm just gonna call this the Red Dwarf Podcast from now on. Uh, I'm still gonna title it My Thoughts Red Dwarf Series 12, but uh, this is going to be uh, just when I introduce the show. This is the Red Dwarf Podcast. So um, this week's episode was Time Wave. And I I didn't really like it. Um, yeah, I just I, I wasn't wasn't really a fan personally. Uh, and I think it goes back to the fact that the title and what happens in the episode are kind of at a, a, a they're conflicting. Uh, so basically, um, spoilers ahead. The premise of the episode is that um, they get caught in a time storm where there are time waves uh, that wash up things that were caught in other time storms. Like from hi- like if they get caught up, they could be sent through history, you know, through time and space, and stuff can come out through time and space. Uh, and a ship comes through and it's locked on a collision course with a planet with a very volatile mineral on it that if the ship crashes into it, it'll like destroy the whole sector. So they have to go on the ship and tell them to turn their ship around uh, because they won't respond to communications. Um, And on the ship, they have outlawed all criticism. So criticism no longer exists. No one's allowed to be critical of anyone. uh, And that is the, the driving force of the episode that the red dwarf crew can't help but criticize everything and how criticism is good and whatever. Um, but what I, I didn't really like was that the title, it seems to imply a more interesting premise than we got the time wave. So for me, I figured that this might be, uh, the source of that, um, uh, clip the, the, that picture we saw of uh, that picture they sent around on social media red, the red, red Dwarf posted all over uh, when the show was in production of uh, Chris Barry wearing uh, the classic Red Dwarf uniform, the one from series one and two, the one uh, that I wore to Comic-Con the year before this year. Uh, so it's technically last year but it's also technically the year before. Uh, you know, the one I wore uh, in the Red Dwarf Series 8 video and the commercial bumpers, like that uh, Red Dwarf uniform. So I figured this might be the episode. Like, I figured, no, oh, maybe they get caught in a time wave and the ship is in different segments of time, like that one Voyager episode where Chakotay goes through time on the ship, which honestly was, like, a fairly good episode of Voyager? I mean, in... As good as a, an episode of Voyager can be with, like, a decent concept. So I was hoping it would be similar here, but we just sort of got you know, the criticism plot, which I don't know. I feel like it could have been two episodes, frankly. It could have been Time Wave and then Criticism. That could have been two episodes in and of itself. Um, and I just... It wasn't even really funny. Like, I didn't really find myself laughing as much as, like, I did at the first two. Like, the first two weren't, like, laugh riots, but, like, they had funny jokes. This one was just not not as strong. Um, I appreciate that it wasn't the series opener, uh, and I think that um, definitely so far Cured and Siliconia were very good. This one is definitely a lower point of the season, um, which I'm hoping that the next uh, three episodes will be better than this, and I'm pretty sure they will. I'm hoping it's like we'll take a dip and then go back up later. Uh, But yeah, I I really didn't like this episode. Um, I don't really have a lot to say uh, outside of what I've already said, that I didn't like it. I didn't think it was very funny. The entire concept seems to be misguided. Like, they could have done a whole episode. Um, Like, if they had done, like, 
the whole criticism plot in a different episode, I think it would have been really good. Like, we could have gotten a lot of stuff where they can't help but criticize each other, and that gets them in trouble. Like, um... And, you know, there's a lot of possibility for that premise, and we kind of don't get what we should have gotten from it. Like, I have no doubt that the concept of the episode, whatever, like, the premise they talked about in the writer's room, I have no doubt that whatever that was was probably a really good idea, and then it just got kind of top-heavy with the time wave and the criticism, and we get this, like, really good character bit with Rimmer where he's, um, spoilers, uh, where they're trying to take out his critical side and he manages to overload the machine by fighting it and talking about how awesome his life is. Uh, and then eventually, um, he can't fight it off anymore. So he starts talking about how horrible his life is and it destroys the machine. And then his critical side is released. Um, and like, it's like he has to come face to face with, uh, like, essentially what is the man in black from, uh, my storylines. Uh, so that was really cool to see. And I think that there was a lot of good stuff in it. I just, as a whole episode, I didn't like it. There were a handful of scenes that I really liked. And then the rest of it, I could have done without. Uh, so really that's like the extent, um, and it's, goes back to the fact that they keep giving us Rimmer is his old self where he's like, my parents hated me and my brothers were better than me. But we already had like twice Rimmer got over it because he realized that his father wasn't really his father and his father was the gardener and that he would probably be proud of him. But we just keep, they keep forgetting about that and willfully ignoring it. And it just annoys me because that Rimmer is gone. There's potential for a Rimmer who is more like, you know, not as crazy a, about rank. But we keep just going backwards with Rimmer. He's kind of becoming Frank Burns, where for all the development we give him, we take 15 steps backwards. Uh, and eventually he's going to end up being a caricature of who he formerly was in the first season, which I think he already has become that, uh, personally speaking. Um... But yeah, so I just really don't like that. Uh, so overall, what did I think of the episode Time Wave? I think it would have been great if it was actually about the Time Wave uh, and the fact that it was about a ship where everyone, uh, like Amaze Girl, is immune to criticism, is a lackluster concept, and would have been better suited in its own episode and not through in an episode called time wave. Um, they it had some good character stuff. Don't get me wrong. It, it was, I don't know. It's not bad. It's, it's a decent, it's a decent red dwarf episode. Not as bad as some of the stuff we got in series seven or eight, but it's definitely not like the stuff we got in like series five and six. Uh, so those were my thoughts on Red Dwarf Series 12, uh, Episode 3. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more videos about Red Dwarf, you can check out the channel. Uh, and if you want to stay up to date about the channel and see my further Red Dwarf reviews or book reviews or movie reviews, you can hit that subscribe button uh, and be sure to hit that bell icon to be notified. Uh, so I will see you in the next video. See you next time. Thank you all for watching, and if you liked the video, you can hit subscribe and watch one of my other videos. My videos can be found on any of these fine sites, and if you want to help out, maybe consider supporting the show on Patreon. See you next time.